So without any further delay, uh, Diego will be presenting the uh, you know slides, and all three speakers will entertain you. Uh, Diego, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Welcome everyone. Thank you, Pooja. Thank you, Maret, for being here on the stage with me. Um, let's get started. Um, I think the first thing we want to say to you all is welcome to the conference. Thank you for once again being here with us, um, spending time with us, even if it's virtually. We're looking forward to one in person uh, as soon as we can. But really, truly, thank you for being here. And, and I hope we can share some things that are valuable for you, valuable for the community, and that you can get something out of this uh, stream of information we're going to direct to you. I think we usually, uh, we would like to thank all the people who have been involved in the conference preparation. There is such an incredible amount of work that has to be done before actually being able to set up all the talks, uh, like reach to the different speakers, um, promote the conference, and people who, are, who, who you can see in this uh, slide, all these images are not all of them uh, because it was just impossible to grab everyone and put them on a on a on a slide, but we just truly want to say from the project and to the community and to the organization, thank you because this is a lot of work, endless hours, um, talking to speakers, talking to sponsors and so on. So it's it's a it's a huge amount of work. So so thank you to to all of you. Um, if any of you too want to just jump and and, and say something. Uh, Please, please jump ahead because some of the slides we didn't rehearse. We're just like sharing information with you. Uh, so we just want to make this as a conversation between all of us. There's definitely a lot of work uh, going into a conference organizing. Uh, lots of, of uh, different things like Diego already uh, there mentioned. And uh, I kind of you know want to remind also that uh, you all there on the end of the line, uh, you are part of organizing this, showing up, uh, finding the way to purchase a ticket uh, and joining us and spending this Friday with us. Uh, thank you for, for that, for, for all of you. Yeah, uh, I would like to add to that. I think uh, uh, it was in my second experience uh, as a part of the program committee and now I see everyone shells out their own time um, to come together, to attend the calls, to discuss a similar ASIC manner over slack um, and also resolve all sorts of issues conflicts come to a common decision to function this i really appreciate everyone contributing their time and effort to this absolutely and one just like a big uh shout out to to naresh like something we, we like to be transparent and open with you with all the community we didn't plan to do a conference this year but it was naresh and his team who actually um showed up and said we will do this. We want to be closer to the community. So thanks to Naresh and all the volunteers. Most of the people you see on this slide are volunteers, people who love the project. And thanks to them, we're here today with you. So yeah, uh, one of the main topics this year is that Selenium is becoming 20 years. Uh, this has been quite a while, two decades after the project was um, yeah, started. And um, this is like a little slide that shows all the stages that Selenium has gone through to be today at the um, 20th anniversary. So maybe if we want to interact a bit with you, the audience, uh, the community, uh, one question we'd like to ask is, remember 20, uh, 2004, like what were you doing? Did you even know that Selenium was a thing? What were you thinking? What were your plans? Maybe share those comments in the chat and, and then we can like check on them as we go on the presentation. For example, in 20, uh, in 20, uh, in 2004, to be honest, I had no clue Selenium existed. I was just like finishing my bachelor uh, in computer science and I didn't even know testing was a thing. So to be honest, it's just, uh, I'm just grateful that I'm here with uh, all of you, thanks to Selenium. Do you remember what you were doing back then, Maret? Yeah, I do. I, I had been around already a while, so I, I happened to be around seeing uh, Brett Petticord uh, announce it. So that's kind of how I, I started noticing it. And there was a lot of action on kind of like creating these new 
world of, of testing tools back then. But I wasn't actively part of, of anything around Selenium until 2018. I was just checking that earlier this this morning that uh, that's kind of when my path with this project really crossed. And you, Puya, do you remember? I was about 11 years old, Diego. I don't think <laughs> I remember what I was doing. <laughs> just close to being a tween and had absolutely no idea that Selenium would be such a big part of my career, but very grateful for it. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's cool to see because, I mean, I was already uh, starting to get, uh, like, in my prof professional life, but, like, so many different uh, uh, group of ages are, like, still part of the project. And and you can see here a bit of the road that Selenium became uh, the way, the thing it is today. It started as a project. Somebody wanted to cover a, a, a need of testing a website for, like Jason Huggins, and then Simon developed a different approach with WebDriver. And, and then around 2007, 2008, they came together. So they were competing projects. Selenium and WebDriver were two separate projects and they came together. And that's the name of this talk, State of the Union. So they were doing this keynote in every Selenium conference to tell everyone how the union of those two projects was um, developing. Um, so that's the first thing that I wanted to highlight that from the beginning, like from the inception of this project, collaboration has been the key. Like working together with different projects, with different companies has been one of the main drivers of this project. And one example is today, 2024, we're working on the web driver by die specification. And one of the main or biggest tools in browser automation, which is Puppeteer, is starting to adopt something that we are working all together as a community and continuously collaborating, which is Web driver by day. Uh, I so our intention with with this slide was to show that having a mature tool brings you a lot of stability, and this is a set of tools that are out there that we use them on a daily basis, and we don't even think how long ago they were created, how much effort and time and hours have been put into it, and these are tools that help us be successful every single day. So one of the key things that we pursue in the project is to bring you all stability so you don't have to be changing your test code, your uh, web scraping code every single time there is a new release. And that's why we try to aim to have this project as mature and stable as possible for uh, all of you to actually be delivering value to whatever you, your goal is. Highlighting the... The, the, the comment I was making a moment ago, collaboration has been the key. So Jason was talking about Selenium many years ago. Simon started talking about WebDriver. And then you can Google this um, YouTube video where they're like talking about each other's projects saying what's bad about yours, what's good about ours, and then vice versa. And from there, that's how the Selenium WebDriver project started to, to grow. And um, this has been the seed for a complete ecosystem. If you think about it, Selenium is not the only implementation about WebDriver, uh, the, the WebDriver standard. So we have the PHP bindings, we have WebDriver.io, we have Appium, who has created a whole new ecosystem as well from this ecosystem. And we have the, the, the standardization of the WebDriver protocol. Um, but more than that, you can also think about the industry, like several companies have been born from this idea of automating browsers. We have Sauce Labs, Browser Stack, API Tools, and Lambda Test. They have been all together um, actually helping us grow as an ecosystem as well. Yeah, and definitely uh, there's many other companies that probably we don't mention here by name. There's actually one of the things that I find interesting in this project is there's so many companies built on Selenium that never mention Selenium. So uh, kind of a big foundation for the entire ecosystem. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is not a complete list to, to be fair. There are many more. Many, more, many of them have uh, sponsored us along the years. Um, it's just that the slide wasn't having enough space. But yeah, there's so many people, so many companies that have been helping us grow the ecosystem. But it's not only about projects, about companies. It's just 
this project is mostly about people, right? Um, I was asking around um, who has been in the project, who has been helping this project grow. And there were so many names that we were out of ideas how to put this together. So um, we tried to make a little collage of text. And basically we want to acknowledge everyone who has been part of this project helping us grow from, you know, Jason, Simon, um, Paul Haman, uh, so many people who have been here, Dave Piacente, uh, Bill McGee, Adam Gaucher, um, so many people that have been with us, helping us to grow this project. Um, and most of them are still in touch with the project in some way or another, because one of the main concepts of this uh, group is that once you're part of the group, you can always come back. The, 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 the access is always there for you. So once you join us, uh, it's really hard to leave us because you are always having the doors open to, to come back and continue working with us. So thank you all for making Selenium uh, what it is today. I'm looking forward to see you um, coming back to us at some point whenever you feel like. Well, I think I would like to um, thank everyone because what I've seen is I've been around for four years and I think Selenium has been around for a longer time. But anytime I see any of the names pop in on Slack or, or, or they make an appearance, um, they're just, uh, they're such a guiding light for us. Uh, their values, their opinions, their thoughts, uh, they really matter to the whole group and as a community. And it's just, uh, they're, they're just so warm. They're just very warm people to have an interaction with, even if I've never spoken to them. Uh, over a video call or met them physically even over slack uh, they just have the best intentions and i it's a it's very rare to have such a big group over the years uh, stay consistent with that and i really appreciate every single thing they've done for the project and it's for me at least kind of joining in uh, into the active group of the project a little later going back to some of the early people like jason or or simon uh, and then uh, meeting some of the people who have volunteered with the PLC, either recently or earlier, uh, Ashley Hansberger, uh, Corinna Pip, uh, Bill McGee, all of those people kind of still, you know, whenever you need someone to talk to, they're always around and, and willing to, you know, help Selenium forward with whatever energy they have. So a lot of great people that need to be mentioned. And... This is a great slide. Uh, Puja was asking around uh, for birthday messages. So did you want to take it from here, Puja? Oh, yeah. I mean, I can let everyone read, but I can also, if probably I can even read it, uh, read it aloud. So I think I got some interesting messages uh, from the group. Uh, so Alex, who pretty much helps a lot with the Ruby binding and CIN is always the go-to person to just get things done. He's a very lovely person. Um, he wishes happy birthday, Selenium. You are the thing that made my professional career and brought me where I am now. And I thought that was a very, very uh, sweet message from his end. Uh, uh, Diego Marit, would you like to read out the message written by Simon? I can read that. The people and community around the project, I have been, uh, well, have been one of the most uplifting things I've been part of, and I'd like to thank everyone who's been part of it over these years. I can see Simon is, is there in the background, so he could have also <laughs> you know, sort of read that out loud. And I'm pretty sure he'll he'll uh, recite something similar uh, earlier uh, or later in the in the day today. Yeah, uh, so, uh, Diego, you want to take over David's wish? Yeah, um, happy to do that. I'm not going to read it verbatim because uh, David... Uh, he's very good with the English language and then he just like speaks many, like says many words. But but what I want to say is that what he's writing there is that it it, it happens very often uh, in the Selenium Slack and in the Selenium IRC. Like the, the story he's telling is that somebody came and asked for help to do something. He didn't know how to program and they just come and we all help them. So this has happened back with David joined and this is still happening. So somebody came and wanted help to learn Selenium for an interview. And everybody was jumping there to help, like Simon, Jim, David, everyone there. Um, we don't know how it went, but the intention of helping everyone who joins this channel is, is incredible. 
Um, it doesn't matter if you're a newbie, an expert. Uh, it doesn't matter from the project side if you're like an experienced committer or just like join the project. Everyone else, everyone there is um, very open to to help each other. So let's quickly jump to the present. Um, we want to share with you what has been happening the last year since the last conference. Um, but we want to uh, recall or remind you uh, who is part of the project these days. Um, these folks are the project leadership committee. And they are in charge of driving the project in terms of direction, what activities we want to do with the, com uh, with the community, uh, where do we want to make the next conference, um trying to make sense of where we should like put the money our um great sponsors uh, give us all these things are are a lot of work and, and this group is is very active um helping the community helping the project uh move forward um we also want to thank a, a couple of people who were with the with the team uh, some months ago but they uh, are taking I'm not gonna say they left, but they're taking like a short break because they are looking forward to go back to the project. Uh, we just, but we just want to thank them, um, all the things uh, they did for us for the project, and and we're looking forward to see you coming back um, as soon as possible because you are um, great people. You helped us a lot, and hopefully uh, we can have you back uh, soon. We also have the. Technical leadership committee. Uh, so this group of folks are in charge of, you know, thinking what's the best next move in the technical side. Uh, if it makes sense to um, add or remove features in some cases. Um, the biggest focus that this group has been having the latest one two years has been selling manager and the web driver by die specification. Um, one of the cool things is that we're finding time to meet. Um, at least twice a year to discuss what we want to do in the next months. And one of the best things we did uh, a few months ago was to um, decide how the methods that you can use to use WebDriver by die are going to be placed. So Titus yesterday released uh, Selenium 422, and you're going to start seeing a few of those things landing slowly in the Selenium um, code base. So yeah, huge thanks to them. Uh, and let's let's uh, put a bit into perspective what it means to have the PLC and the TLC together working together with the community, and this is something that Marat is great explaining us. Uh, you can see a lot of very small icons there in the screen, and you might want to zoom in a bit in, in order to get this. Uh, but for the last two years, when I've been spending time, one of the first things, obviously, that I noticed is, is that there's some overlap now, at least, in the uh, PLC and TLC. There's a couple of people, uh, same names, same images, you could see on the on the previous sl slides. So uh, that's a, a bridge, uh, bridging way uh, for us to, to create things. But there's a lot of work kind of going on. Uh, there's on the top side of that image, on the top right, uh, you can see kind of there's a PLC and SFC interface. Software Freedom Conservancy is a partner uh, with us. They are the fiscal host of our project, and they've been the fiscal host and the owner of the so-called Selenium trademark uh, that the, the project then, then uh, has for these, these 20 years. Uh, at the same time, on, on that fiscal hosting side, this year, in the last year, we have started working uh, kind of uh, from a community perspective, also a second source of, of being able to do fiscal hosting with open source, uh, uh, open, I, I keep forgetting uh, the, the shortenings here, OSC, it's a, a op, uh, well, a platform basically uh, where you can do uh, finances very openly. And, and a fiscal host behind that. So some of our money, uh, basically micro sponsorship money, uh, a little less than two thousand euros, uh, two thousand euros there currently is on on those those accounts. Otherwise, most of our uh, assets are uh, around uh, around SFC. Manoj there was helping us uh, or helping me in in reminding that it's open source uh, collective. So so that's the the uh, OSC shortening for. 
So again, fiscal hosting, figuring out what's the organization, that's the top hand side there. So, so we need a place to hold things for 20 years, hand over from uh, project uh, phase to project phase. Uh, then there's various things where we use uh, contracts, creating uh, conferences, maybe doing some marketing activities, maybe helping out with documentation, maybe even sometimes building some of the code. We might want to uh, set up something more uh, official than just volunteering. So that's work that PLC and uh, does with SFC towards the services. We also work with a lot of companies in order for bringing them in into this lovely community. Individuals and companies are equal representatives in, in many ways in, in this, this uh, Selenium uh, work and uh, uh, figuring out how to use Selenium trademark. What, what's a Selenium conference? What, uh, when, when you can mention, uh, mention Selenium? That's something we, we try to help uh, different parties with. And then obviously the big part of the community is, is the volunteers, like anything you would want to do around selling him, not, you know, obviously we would love people committing more code with us. Like that's a great uh, dream, helping people uh, write documentation, uh, translating that documentation, uh, just using and telling uh, if there is a problem that we maybe could help with. All of that is, is valuable contributions. But similarly, organizing conferences, uh, finding different locations, maybe training uh, the community, uh, uh, setting up user groups, just sharing uh, uh, anywhere and anything uh, around Selenium uh, is, is, is something that we're definitely doing. And then uh, for the entire ecosystem, we are kind of, you know, proudly looking at all of the projects that Diego earlier mentioned. And uh, when we see them doing something uh, lovely and, and wonderful, we would like to amplify by that as well. So setting up the, the stage, setting up the, the framework in, in which we operate uh, uh, and the different directions, managing the stakeholders, uh, well, collaborating with the stakeholders, not really anything else, but uh, that uh, uh, so that we would have the next great 20 years. That's kind of the present that we are uh, on. And all that that we're trying to put together is to get more people contribute to us. Um, this is uh, a way to recognize their efforts. Uh, this was one of the hardest slides to build, mostly because we have been doing this in the previous keynotes, uh, like recognizing the people who are helping us in an active way. Um, and it's just getting more and more. Like the first time we did it, it was like rather easy because we were like, you know, like welcoming people every now and then and then helping them to get started. But this is starting to become a habit. Like when someone comes and says, how can I help? We try to direct them to, to, to some type of uh, help we need. And every time there's more people. So this time, like building the slide was very complicated because we had to fit all these people in. And this is more than three times that we had in the, in the, in the last keynote. So I expect that in the next conference, we're going to have like maybe two slides of people, or I don't know what we're going to do. But all the things that Maret was mentioning, uh, they are. This is one of the results. Like we're having a, a louder voice. People are checking more what we're doing, and people are having the intention of helping us more. Um, half, at least, more than half of these contributors are completely new. They have never been in the project before. So this is also a way to reach out to different communities, different groups of people that are actually getting interested into the Selenium project. So thank you all. And and really without you, we couldn't be actually moving moving forward in the project. I'm also mixing this up a little bit with a Selenium Open Space Conference. We'll have the second edition of that coming up in the autumn time. It's a little bit different conference in the sense that you won't see a program for it in advance. You'll see people uh, submitting uh, or uh, enrolling uh, with a pull request. So kind of uh, one way of uh, ending up in some of these contributor lists is, is joining then that conference again. I'm trying to set it up on, on the actual uh, 20th birthday, just like last year. So that's a good time of, of the year to remember and calculate how many years of Selenium we have behind us.
yeah the 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 version the previous version was i think pretty successful so so that it's also a great effort uh from the community especially for my leading but uh like people like palavi was were helping a lot um so it's incredible how how the name selenium brings so many people and, and so many volunteers together to just help the project uh move forward um and a little recognition i would say uh, in a way that uh, we perceive we see you um like we are uh, seeing how many people visit our website uh, we are seeing how many people use selenium um so this is just to share that we get around like 600,000 unique visitors per month checking our documentation checking what we're doing and the top country is india yeah like you are uh, probably the biggest selenium community around the world and this is just a way to say thank you to recognize all the 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 word of mouth that, that we're like passing along thanks to you selenium is growing as well um but also like there are plenty of geographical locations where selenium is is, is a huge thing uh but yeah it's just uh really makes sense to recognize all all the things we're doing for the selenium project and selenium community um just mentioning that many people just um yeah visit our documentation and they are looking forward to understanding how to get started and, and it's just interesting to see how many people are going to our website just to learn how we do things and how to use the tool and this also is giving us a big responsibility to always think how we can give you a better content a better tooling to um yeah achieve your goals in an easier way. Uh, yeah, one thing I wanted to mention uh, before, I don't know if Puja or Mario wanted to say something, was like, if you want to see these numbers, they're all public. We're trying to do as many things as public as possible, transparent to you all. You can go to plausible.io slash selenium.dev. You can see the stats of the website. It's all open for you. Use them in any way you feel that is um, good for you. Um, it's completely open for everyone. Right, so uh, Selenium Usage, I think I forgot to add an event there, so to hide that. Uh, so anyway, what I wanted to show here, or what, what we wanted to show is that since uh, January 2024, we're uh, like checking how many people use Selenium, right? Since version 417. And we're getting a lot of surprises uh, because uh, the languages we thought were the most popular are not. Uh, in the latest version. So for example, um, we see that we have around 2.5 active unique users per month, only tracking the last five version of Selenium. So who knows how many people are still using 4.5, 4.6. So this number could be exponentially much bigger. Um, and one of the surprises I got was, uh, yeah, like in the last, Four, five versions, the most popular language is Python. And then it's C sharp, followed by Java. And then it goes JavaScript and Ruby. Uh, but this is a, a huge surprise for me because I always thought Java was the most popular. Uh, probably it is if we sum everything along the old versions, but in the latest four or five versions, this is the most popular language. And uh, again, again, a recognition for the for the Indian community the most active users come from India and then after uh, the United States. And, and there is a huge, um, basically, I think the Asian continent is the biggest user of, of Selenium uh, across the, the world. Um, again, this, this content, these numbers are out for you. They're available for you at plausible.io, manager.selenium.dev. Uh, so we just wanted to recognize all the, the work they're all doing to make Selenium uh, as popular and as uh, usable as, as we can. And here, um, what we want to do is, you know, we have been talking about the PLC, the TLC, people who are contributing, uh, how we see you in the website stats, how we see you in the Selenium usage, but we wanted to take a moment to uh, think and be um, like a moment of gratitude to you all, the community, because uh, you are the biggest um, component of the Selenium project. 
uh, if we can think about like code wise or project wise, uh, I think you are the, the 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 part that is helping Selenium move forward because you are like telling everyone else what Selenium is doing. You are sharing what we're doing. So if you want to think think it from a business point of view, you are the best marketing vehicle that anyone can have. And thanks to you, we are uh, what we are today. So I just wanted to take a moment to thank you all and like. Um, give the word to Pooja and Maria to also share some some nice things about the the community. That's what we're doing, uh, what we're all doing together, really. So community is is kind of a big, and the numbers uh, quite impressive. And uh, the fact that it's uh, new for us this year to be able to see these numbers, it's quite uh, kind of a meaningful thing uh, to to realize how many of us there are in the world using and, and running automation, uh, browser automation on, on top of Selenium. It is great to see um, the Selenium community come together on different platforms, different forums, different events, and the consistency and curiosity with the way they operate. It's just beautiful to see such a long project for having such a lovely longevity, and we hope for another 20, 50, 100 years. And I think one integral part is always the community. Yeah, and uh, if you're curious and you go and check the the link I was sharing a moment ago, um, so the 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 manager dot dot dev at possible, and just display the the world map, you will see that every single country in the world has used Selenium at some point in the last six months. So that is like an incredible thing to say, and it's again all thanks to you, the Selenium community. Pooja, do you want to take this one? Because you have been more active in this area than me in the last two years. I think, <laughs> okay. Uh, so I think um, this slide is to express gratitude to the WC3 Browser Testing and Tools Working Group. Uh, it's a group of folks from different companies, different stakeholders, different browsers, different automation tools. Uh, they meet monthly and uh, they're the ones who are figuring it out what goes in the spec. They, they're the ones who are helping figure out what goes in the web driver spec, what goes in the extension spec, what goes in the web driver by spec. And uh, they come from a lot of different opinions. So the browser vendors, um, they have their opinions as to what's useful from their end. Automation tools, they have their own suggestions as to what is helpful. But the most beautiful part is how they work together in the open so you can Go to W3C GitHub, look at the issues they're working on, look what they've closed, look at the roadmaps and the conversation. It's all available for you to look at. And you can also go make a request and they will reason with you and find the best solution. So what I've seen, because I I hang out on the GitHub, uh, by I spec GitHub repo a lot with the spec. And I see the conversations and the communication they have and how they're always thinking about the end users. So there's a lot of time, effort, thought that they put into delivering a standard and providing that kind of flexibility for the users. And I think it's just amazing um, how much and how many they work with. I think that's one of the great things that you can actually talk directly to the people who build things inside the browser. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the Selenium project. I'm talking about the community in general. I've seen with this move to WebDriver by Dai, I've seen people asking, I am doing this with the current CDP uh, implementation. How would I do it in Baidai? In some cases, we tell them this is what you can do. In other cases, we tell them, actually, we haven't considered that case. Why don't you go and, and, and create an issue in that repository? And what we see is that the browser vendors, so people from that work at Mozilla, at, 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 at Google, at, at Microsoft, at, 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 at Apple, they go on and they reply, like, what's your use case? They try to understand you. And, and there is an incredible amount of collaboration and an openness that is just, I thought it was not possible because you always see these big companies as very distant, but it, they're just there. They're there to collaborate because they want to build a, a, a platform where you can actually automate browsers in a simple way. And they're all working together. And with that, we also want to highlight again uh, the ecosystem that is around Selenium, so the WebDriver ecosystem. Uh, we want to again give a big shout out to the different 
uh, projects that are out there um, augmenting the, the the voice of Selenium and WebDriver. So uh, independent of the language you want like to use, if it's Java or C Sharp or Ruby, it's it's just a, a pleasure to have all these projects that some of them are built up to, on top of Selenium, some of them are an independent implementation, but thanks to them, the word of WebDriver and Selenium is, you know, getting shared across. And if you are into uh, testing, if you're doing browser automation into testing for for testing, sorry, uh, I mixed the words. I completely recommend you to have a look at these products first before actually using um, Selenium in the raw way. Because if you use something like Selenite, you will get many things out of the box, like the automatic waiting. Uh, same thing with Nightwatch or Weather.io. Um, you will have so many things working out of the box, like reporting, automatic waiting, synchronization, a much easier way to write a locator. Um, there will be less boilerplate code. So our recommendation is to have a look at that. And our plan for the next six months is to actually um, promote these products more in our website that we just saw um, that there is a good amount of traffic. So let's briefly talk about the future. And, and I think uh, we all will have um, different opinions here. We're going to like jump into each other's words, I would say. But the good thing is that we're all having a great openness to listen to different opinions about what the future of Selenium is. And, and let's share the first bit of it. Would you like to jump there, Puja? Mm, OK. Uh, so Selenium and Appium have a very good harmony. So we are, we are friends with Selenium. Uh, we are always in touch with them. We work very, very closely with them. Uh, just a little bit of backstory. In the last two developer summits that we had, we've tried to collaborate with Appium in uh, identifying the best approach for things, for the matters at hand. For example, at the Dev Summit that happened uh, last year in November, uh, Jonathan Lips from Appium, he was able to help introduce BiDi to Appium. And we did. he just did it during the entire few days that we all uh, worked together uh, again, recently at one of the Dev Summit, um, they were able to help us understand the extensibility points, uh, how to make Selenium extensible so it is easier for Appium. So Appium can do their things easily without having to, you know, have their own wrappers around a lot of things. What can Selenium do to make their life easier to develop these fun features for Appium? So uh, Selenium and Appium work very closely together. We're also in constant communication with them. We also receive a lot of important contributions from them. So I think we're identifying what is the best way to make Selenium extensible in a manner that is easy for Appium. And it's also in a very, very long-term roadmap to make sure that these projects eventually merge and they become one. Um, and just serve the community they both are serving. Yeah, so that's one of the first um, hints about the future. Um, we have been in conversations and this is something we want to do long term uh, because it's it's a very common setup. Like so many people use Selenium and Appium as dependencies to automate both web and mobile. So eventually it just makes sense to to do what what puja was saying a moment ago uh, yeah uh, david and everyone uh, sorry to interrupt but we have just five minutes left with us so it's just a reminder for you oh thank you yeah yeah um this is a quick slide uh i wanted to highlight here that we have this web library ecosystem uh, but together with that you know we have a new um part that has joined the, the ecosystem, which is Puppeteer, because Puppeteer, as, a, as we mentioned in the first slide, one of the first slides, is now supporting WebDriver by Dai as well. Um, so more people are, more projects are joining the, the family. Um, I think I've got to give a highlight on this one. So uh, I know I think WebDriver by Dai seems like the future, but uh, in reality, the future is already here. Uh, so WebDriver by Dai is being implemented. The spec that is laid out is being almost completely implemented by the major browsers. Um, 
and you can see this. This is again, this is one of my favorite dashboards. I like dashboards. I think the users can see it in action as to what is happening, and you can see that um, on the left are the different modules that are listed that are listed in the by spec. And on the right, you see different browsers and how well they've implemented and just the different shades of green make me very happy. And it just indicates that how actively they are um, implementing the spec, how actively they are extending the roadmap for lovely automation use cases um, and to solve common problems for all the users out there. So um, again, one shout out to the browser vendors for always being so open, listening to us and just communicating everything out in the open. Um, one more thing about web now, I know we, I think Diego covered a lovely highlight about the web driver ecosystem, but now because with the extension of BiDi, we have now a BiDi ecosystem, the projects that are adapting the web driver BiDi standard. So for starters, that would be uh, Selenium and how it's adapted it for multiple languages and how we are working towards having the high level APIs that you will see from this version release. A uh, web driver IO has a dedicated uh, package for web driver by die. If you just want to use that package out of the box and uh, just to run with it and do by die tests, uh, Appium has also adapted to web driver by die and added APIs to support that. Uh, Diego highlighted earlier that how Puppeteer now is a cross browser uh, automation tool thanks to by die and it's adopted it so wonderfully. In addition to this, even cloud providers are. Um, jumping in the trend and they want to support BiDi because it is the next big thing. So Brass Stack supports it, Sauce Lab supports it. So the whole ecosystem is just coming together wonderfully. That's right. And, yeah. and a small moment to to acknowledge the work that, that Todd Tarsi has been doing with the Selenium ID, uh, like a lone rider during the last year. Um, it's very close to releasing a, a, a final version. Right now, the Selenium ID is in a beta version. It's a standalone application. You can go to the releases page in the Selenium ID, and you can download the binary and start using the next version of the Selenium ID already today. It works quite nice. It's a standalone application, so it removes a lot of the limitations that the browser extension had. So this is a big invitation for you all to give it a try and see how that feels for you. And we're looking forward to your feedback. Selenium 5, uh, I think you had more insights about this, Pooja, or was it you, Marit? I don't remember. I don't know if we have, uh, well, if I have insights, I'm just kind of wondering uh, on the release schedule, which is probably on many people's minds. <laughs> and I keep hearing it's Christmas, but the year hasn't been you know, any, ever announced. I think. Um... Yeah, that's it's tough to put a date on it when a group of volunteers are devoting their time to help us out. But I can quickly glance over what is in the books for Selenium 5. Uh, one major component is the web driver by die. So the entire group has worked together to identify high level APIs that will be implemented in all language bindings. So the users can start using that Selenium 5 onwards. And uh, to that, we'll also be deprecating. Uh, the CDP APIs. We'll keep the low level APIs intact, but the high level CDP APIs will be deprecated in favor of the Selenium BiDi APIs because that's something we are moving on to. So that is one big chunk from the BiDi section. And I think another, there are very interesting things happening even from a Selenium manager standpoint, right? Um, we want to work in making sure there are some fixes around race conditions of better better error handling. Um, I think there's a long going thread about digitally, digitally signing the binaries. And I know um, Diego Marit and the PLC group is working to get that done. And I think that's close to reality, pretty much close to reality to get to that stage. So yeah, I think a lot of big things are coming in. And I think there are also talks about streaming log. Um, that happen in the Selenium Manager to the console so users can debug it in depth. So anything else that I missed, Diego? No, that's basically, I would say, uh, it's like paving the way to have everyone use by die and Selenium Manager, Selenium 5, and probably Selenium 6 will be only by die. 
Um, so yeah, uh, we're wrapping up. Um, we're wrapping up. Sorry, uh, native speaker, non-native speaker issues sometimes with the pronunciation. But yeah, join us in the project. Uh, there are different ways to join us. You can answer questions in different parts in the Selenium issues, Stack Overflow, anywhere. You can check our web website, share information about Selenium, report bugs, write code any way you want to help us. It's extremely welcomed. And one last thing, we want to thanks to all the sponsors who are here with us today at the conference, API Tools, Source Labs, Browser Stack, Lambda Test, and Specmatic. Um, without you, we couldn't have done this conference. So huge thank you to you all. And our message to you all is please enjoy the conference, meet people, make connections, and make uh, keep making the community a warm and, um, place uh, to welcome everyone else. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Diego. Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Pooja. Everyone, as we are over the time, uh, if you have any more questions or you want to you know, talk to any or three of these, we have Hangout section with Table State of Union. Uh, you guys can join there and you know uh, take further uh, discussions with all these three members. Uh, please, at the end of the session, uh, when you leave the session, please rate the session as well. Uh, thanks, thanks, everyone. Uh, let's let's uh, uh, begin to the next session. Thank you.